Assalamualaikum and good day to everyone. Welcome to my channel. I'm Dr. Wan Faiziah Wan Abdul Rahman from Department of Pathology, University Science Malaysia. This time, I, I will talk about colonic polyps. This topic is one part from my lecture on pathology of lower GI tumor for medical student. As you all know, pathology is about understanding the nomenclature. So, first, you should understand what does it mean with a polyp. Polyp can be defined as a tumor mass that protrudes into the lumen. It can be pedunculated with stalk or sessile without stalk. As you can see here, in this picture, this is a very nice pedunculated polyp with a stalk here and this is a sessile polyp without any stalk. Even from the colonos colonoscopic findings, we can appreciate whether the polyp is sessile or pedunculated. There is nothing without purpose in pathology. Even sessile or pedunculated, it gives it give you different uh, perspective, especially for the prognosis, right? Because in this case, the sessile has actually a slightly increase in the risk of malignancy change as compared to pedunculated polyp. Does the polyp benign or malignant? The answer is can be both. Polyp is a general term, usually microscopic term to describe usually the macroscopic term, sorry, the macroscopic term or gross findings to describe the visible projection into the lumen. The visible projection into the lumen because it is because it is a gross findings we could not give a definite diagnosis whether it is benign or malignant all right we can just call it polyp but when pathologists say it is papilloma papilloma it means it is a benign polyp confirmed and it confirmed to be a benign polyp. Papilloma is a histology term when the visible polypoidal structure, the visible polypoidal structure or finger-like structures appreciate by microscopy without any dysplastic epithelium within. So we can confidently say that this is papilloma, the in indicate of benign polyp so how actually to recognize polyp by histology it must have a surface it must have a surface that covered by at least two-thirds of the epithelium all right two-thirds of the epithelium some polyp have peduncle like this and this peduncle or pedicle lined by normal mucosal epithelium. This is a normal mucosal epithelium. But uh, some polyp without peduncle, so it stops here, showing a, just a raw area. Both are considered as a polypoidal structure, polyp. One is with peduncle like this, and one without peduncle, we call it sessile polyp. So by having this structure, we confirm that it is polyp. And then depends on the cells that lining the epithelium to call it whether it is non-neoplastic or neoplastic polyp. Very important. When we examine the polyp, 
it is very important to classify into non-neoplastic or neoplastic as it gives a different risk of malignancy. Neoplastic polyp is a precursor to a colonic cancer. But non-neoplastic polyp, they has no to minimal risk of malignancy. Non-neoplastic polyps, we classify into three types, hyperplastic, inflammatory, and hamartomatous polyps. But for the neoplastic polyps, we have tubular adenoma, villus adenoma, tubular villus adenoma, sessile serrated adenoma, and familial adenomatous polyposis. We start with the hyperplastic polyp. This is the most common polyp, and it occurs when there is decreased epithelial cell turnover and delay shading of surface epithelial cells that leading to piling up of goblet cells and absorptive cells. Typically, hyperplastic polyp, the size less than 5 mm in diameter and it has no malignant potential. Grossly, it's smooth, it has a smooth surface with nodular protrusion of the mucosa. And by histology, it has a well-formed glands and creeps lined by non-neoplastic epithelial cells and composed of mature goblet cells or absorptive cells. You can see here, grossly, it has a nodular protrusion with peduncle with a smooth surface, right? Very shining and smooth surface. Microscopy, as you can see here, as you can see here, this is a very nice poly, poly, polypoidal structures by histology. Okay, this is a considered as peduncle with a normal colonic epithelium lining the peduncle. But look at the epithelial surface. The cell here looks crowding, crowding of epithelial cells. All right, and the most important features to describe the hyperplastic polyp is presence of the. We, we call it serrated, serrated epithelium. Serrated means jagged epithelium or, or, or sawtooth-like appearance of the epithelium. You can see the epithelium here, especially at the surface of the epithelium, we can see it is jagged. Yeah? It looks jagged. And this jagged appearance causing <coughs> causing crowding appearance of the epithelial surface of the polyp, okay? Under higher power, maybe you can see clearly the jagged or serrated appearance. You can see here, this is one of the, uh, the uh, uh, surface epithelial cells that have the jagged surface or serrated surface okay when it is uh, within the seed within the crypts or gland it shows a star shaped appearance like this this is a star shaped appearance the normal glands usually very rounded lumen but here in hyperplastic glands the cells become the lumen become a star shaped appearance that indicating of the hyperplastic process all right. Apart from that, there will be increase in the number of cells that you can see here. The cells look very clear that contain the mucin inside the cells. We call it goblet cells. So in hyperplastic polyp, usually there, there is increase in the number of the goblet cells. So these features are all characteristic of the hyperplastic polyp. And remember, the cells that lining the epithelium, <coughs> the cells that lining the crypts, the epithelial cells has no dysplasia. Alright, that's why it we call it 
we put it under non-metastatic colic. Now, we move on to the next polyp, which is inflammatory polyp. I don't want to talk much about this type of polyp. Just remember that these polyps are result from chronic cycles of injury and healing. The best example for inflammatory polyp is pseudopolyps in inflammatory bowel disease and solitary rectal ulcer syndrome or mucosal prolapse. They are actually not the true polyp and they are considered as a false polyp. All right? And um, because it is due to chronic inflammatory uh, process, therefore, the hallmark features will be the inflammatory infiltrate. Generally, inflammatory polyp, just like a hyperplastic polyp, they has no risk of malignancy. When we talk about pseudopolyps, <coughs> it is no it has no risk of malignancy. But we, when, when we, we talk about IBD, inflammatory bowel disease, ulcerative colitis, or Crohn's disease, it has, it has another story because they have uh, some risk towards the malignancy. Um, but when we are talking about polyp, they has no pseudopolyps, they has no risk of malignancy. So this is an example of two types of inflammatory polyps, the pseudopolyps of inflammatory bowel disease and the solitary rectal ulcer syndrome or mucosal prolapse. They are actually not a true polyp but just looks like uh, polypoidal structures, especially when you are looking at the uh, bicolonoscopy. <coughs> now we move on to the uh, the third polyp, which is more important, uh, we call it hematomatous polyp. <clears throat> it comes from the word hematoma. Hematoma is a tumor-like growth that composed of mature tissues that are normally present at the site in which they develop. <clears throat> Meaning that it is a mature tissues that grow in abnormal fashion, forming a tumor-like condition. All right. <clears throat> Hemerotomatous polyp usually sporadic of germline mutation in tumor suppressor gene and they have usually attracted with some uh, syndromes. For example, Pugh Jagger syndrome, okay, which is also have the extra intestinal manifestation like a hyperpigmentation of oral cavity. This is the uh, classic features of the Pugh Jagger syndrome, the extra intestinal manifestation of the Pugh Jagger syndrome. And what's special about the hematomatous polyp, especially for these two types of the uh, polyp, both increase risk of malignancy. All right. Okay, um, now we go to the first hematomatous polyp, the first type of the hamartomatous poly, which is Pugh Jagger syndrome. Pugh Jagger syndrome. Um, it is a rare autosomal dominant syndrome that affect the median age of uh, 11 years old and more common in small intestine, especially jejunum, jejunum, jagger, jejunum, and then it usually associated with multiple GI hematomatous polyps and also mucocutaneous hyperpigmentation, just like a picture that I showed you just now. And then because they have um, association with the uh, germline uh, mutation, gene mutation, especially STK11 genes, therefore they have increased risk of several malignancies like a uh, uh, colon, a pancreas, breast, lung, ovaries, uterus, and also testes. Their gross appearance are variable. You can see here their gross appearance, but mostly they are large, pedunculated polyp with lobulated surface. You can see the irregular and lobulated surface. This is multiple lobules like this. All right. 
their classic histology features usually the this is their classic histology features presence of they call it a borizing network of smooth muscle this is a smooth muscles that showing the aborizing network of this smooth muscle cutting through the lamina propria yeah? also known as the christmas tree appearance and their glands lined by normal appearing intest intestinal epithelium this is a very classic features for the pute checker polyp but still no dysplasia of the epithelium therefore it is classified under non-neoplastic polyp although they have a higher risk increased risk to become malignant all right and then we go to the second type of the hematomatous polyp we call it juvenile polyposis when it is multiple and um, because usually it is multiple but if it is single we call it retention polyp but actually it is the same polyp uh, the same polyp referred to the referred to the same polyp under hematomatous polyp all right um it results from focal malformations of the mucosal epithelium and lamina propria and involve children less than five years old majority occur in rectum and typically present with rectal bleeding and uh, the gross appearance usually rounded lobulated with stalk less than three centimeter smooth surface reddish lesion with cystic spaces on cut section and then by histology usually it is characterized by cystically dilated glands that fill with mucin and then, then the lamina propria is edematous and then composed of the inflammatory infiltrate okay this is example the classic example of the juvenile polyp juvenile polyp or retention polyp you can see here you can see here it shows a very smooth surface well defined polyps and it composed of edematous stroma edematous stroma you can see here the stroma become whitish in color it become whitish and the stroma the connective tissue separated each other indicating of the uh, edema edema process is going on all right and then inside the poly usually it include we call it uh, it enclosing the cystically dilated glands it composed of the cystically dilated glands this is a glands that become uh, dilated and contain mucin inside it okay so this is um okay, you can see the gross you can see this is many cystic spaces eh? Cyst the cystic spaces is actually the cystically dilated glands and you can see the stroma here looks very shiny and whitish all right now let's move to the another type of polyp which is more important we call it neoplastic polyps also known as the adenomatous polyp or adenoma it's very important because it is a precursor to the majority of colorectal adenocarcinoma all right your size range the size can range from small, often pedunculated, to large sessile lesion. Huh? Can be 0.3 to 10 cm. Remember that the bigger in size, the more sessile of the lesion, the higher risk of the malignancy. Okay? And their surface it can be smooth, can be velvety, can be raspberry-like. And the size is the most important characteristic that correlates with risk of malignancy. And of course, that's why it is fall under neoplastic polyps because it characterized by the presence of epithelial dysplasia. We call it dysplastic cells. The cells is abnormal, atypical.
Okay. Mm. Colony polyps, they have basically two types, uh, three types, tubular, tubular villus, and villus. All depends on the morphology of the uh, polyps. All right. Tubular adenoma, usually small, pedunculated, composed of small, rounded, or tubular glands. And this is the most common type of the neoplastic polyp. But the villus adenoma, usually larger, sessile, covered by slender villi. And it has the higher risk of malignancy. And for the tubular villus adenoma, it is a mixture of the tubular and villus elements. All of them must have a histology of dysplasia, the dysplastic epithelium. We call it dysplastic epithelium when there is a cytology, uh, when there is a nuclear hypochromasia or hypochromatic nuclei, high nuclear to cytoplasmic ratio, elongation of the nuclei, and also stratification. Okay. Apart from that, also increase in the mitosis. These are all the cytology hallmark to call that the cell is dysplastic. And these features not present in non-neoplastic polyp. This is the gross appearance of the neoplastic colony polyp. The tubular adenoma, usually it is pedunculated and it shows the very smooth, shiny surface. All right. But um, the villus adenoma, usually large, sessile and have a velvety or cauliflower-like uh, surface. Okay. And this is under low magnification photomicrograph, you can appreciate that this is actually a polypoidal structure with a peduncle. Yeah? And this is a tubular adenoma. This photomicrograph, this photomicrograph also shows a very nice polypoidal structure. Okay. But their stock here uh, is composed of the normal colony epithelium. All right. But look at the surface of the epithelium. Here, the surface of the epithelium, the cells look different from the cells that lining the peduncle and other areas. Okay. From the closer view, you can compare the cell at this side, your left side, and the cells on your right. This is a normal colony epithelium, all right, with abundance of goblet cells. But the cell here, you can see their difference in terms of the size of the nucleus, which is become increased, elongated nuclei, and then in terms of the color of the nuclei, become darker in color, we call it hypochromatic nuclei. You can see here, the color of the nuclei become more bluish, or darker in color, eh? hypochromatic, because it contains a lot of <coughs> DNA inside the it, co it composes a lot of chromatin inside the nucleus. And not only increase in the number of chromatin, the chromatin become cause appearance so that's why it com it looks hypochromatic all right and look at their cytoplasmic mucin or goblet cells become reduced all right in this plastic cells it become reduced in the number of goblet cells and of course if you can if you see under higher power you can appreciate the mitosis okay and the key features here is a tubular pattern and then dysplastic cells and these two things is the important to diagnose the tubular adenoma
For villus adenoma, it is characterized by cauliflower-like appearance. Cauliflower-like appearance, the irregular surface of the lesion. All right? A majority of them are sessile. All right? Microscopy, it has a villus structure. This is a villus structure or papillae-like structure that, that growing upward from their basement membrane. This is basement membrane. It's growing upward like this without any tubule. You cannot see any lumen, rounded lumen, no tubule here. So this is only the villus structures. So this is the microscopy of the villus adenoma. And when you see the cell that lining the villus, it is this plastic yeah, with the hypochromatic color, elongation of the nuclei. Okay, you can see the difference between the tubular adenoma here and the villus adenoma here. Yeah. Tubular adenoma characterized by a rounded glands, rounded glands or tubules uh, with the presence of lumen here inside the at the central of the glands. Okay, but for villus adenoma. It has a long slender projections that are reminiscent of the small intestinal villi. Okay, these are just present at the small intestine. Okay, and the mixture when the tumor, when the polyp is composed of mixture of tubule and the villus, so we call it tubular villus adenoma. Yeah? They have a different risk in malignancy. Uh, because the villus adenoma has more, has a higher potential towards malignancy. All right. I like this diagram very much. It illustrated well the appearance, uh, the the appearance of each type of polyp here. Uh, the difference between each polyp. Okay, you can see. You can compare with the normal uh, col colonic mucosa, the colonic epithelium here. And this is the hyperplastic. And this is the juvenile hematomatous polyp with a very nice smooth surface and content of cystically dilated glands here. And this is a pure chagall hematoma with the aberizing smooth muscle cutting through the lamina propria. And this is a pedunculated tubular adenoma. Pedunculate, this is a stalk, and then this is a glans. And this is a villus adenoma. It is villus appearance that that um, <coughs> project upward from the basement membrane here. And then the pseudopolyps, like a polyp-like structure in the inflammatory bowel disease. And this is the malignant polyp when it invade, invade into another structure. We call it adenocarcinoma, all right? And the last one, the last one for today is familial adenomatous polyposis. It just different in their name, different in their name, and also in the num number of polyps, but their morphology is similar to tubular adenoma or villus adenoma. The FAP is an autosomal dominant disorder due to mutation of the APC gene. It characterized by numerous colorectal adenoma. It is numerous colorectal adenoma estimages and characterized by um, numerous polyps for diagnosis. Huh? As many as several thousand of polyps found during diagnosis. Okay. It has a risk of malignancy about 100% if untreated. That's why those with FAP, they are advised for prophylactic colectomy. It is a standard therapy for individuals that carry the APC gene mutation. Okay. Their extra-intestinal manifestation include the congenital hypertrophy of retinal pigment epithelium. And their morphology, as I mentioned earlier, is indistinguishable from the sporadic adenoma, like tubular adenoma, villus adenoma, or tubular villus adenoma.
Here, it characterized by numerous polyps that carpeting the mucosa. And then their histology is similar to tubular adenoma or villus adenoma. All right. This is the example of the polyps, numerous polyps that can be seen uh, during the colonoscopy. Okay, that's all from me. Thank you. Remember to, to all students, work hard in silence and let your success be your noise. Alright, please, could you please write one SEQ for 10 months on colony polyps? You can email me. Alright, anything you can just email me. If, if you have anything, just email and uh, I will try to uh, reply to your email. Don't forget to sub subscribe to my channel. Okay, until we meet again in another channel uh, soon. Okay, see you. Bye. Assalamualaikum.